so we're going to kind of skip ahead to 6.5 for now and talk about solving equations with trig functions, right? If we have functions, we can form equations with these functions. And for the most part, everything we know about solving equations still applies. Nothing we're doing here is really new. We're just adding a new tool to our mathematical toolbox, and that's our ability to use inverse trig functions. Or actually, just trig functions and also inverse trig functions, I guess. Right, you'll see inverse trig functions, you'll see trig functions kind of throughout our equations and our, our process in this section. But we also have to watch out for one more thing, and that's in the way that the problem is worded. If a domain restriction is given on the angle theta, so such as saying something like this here, right, it's theta falls between 0 and 2 pi, then if we're given that restriction, we're looking for what's called a particular or a set of particular solutions. And in this case, our answers, and there will be multiple answers, I'll show you what I mean in a minute, our answers are just all of the answers that we're looking for. Our answers are the only answers. I'll show you what I mean in a second. If that domain restriction is not given, then we're looking for what we call the general solution. And if that's the case, we have to consider something called the period of the function. And what that just means for us for now, whoops, what that just means for us for now is that we reach a point where the values start to cycle um, over a certain length of interval, certain length interval, I guess, for, that might be the best way to explain it for now. What this means functionally, and all you need to know about right now, we'll talk about it more when we talk about graphing, is that for sine and cosine, the values repeat every two pi radians or 360 degrees. So in addition to whatever our answer is, we also have to add on two pi n if we're talking about radians, or 360 n if we're talking about degrees. Well, for tangent, values repeat every pi radians, or 180 degrees. So for that, we just have to remember to tack on this little extra piece plus pi n or plus 180 n, depending on what we're talking about. So if we have to deal with a general solution, if no restriction is given, well, then I want to give all of the possible solutions. And the way I do that is with this little addition piece here. And for all of these, n is an integer. For the most part, we're going to be dealing with particular solutions. But just in case you come across a general solution problem, I want to make sure you've at least seen it before. So again, all of our equation solving strategies still apply. So solve the equation given here, cosine squared plus cosine equals zero, for all values of theta between zero and 360 degrees. So particular solutions, our answers that we get are our only answers. Well, our equation solving strategies, as normal, apply. So one thing I can do is factor out a common term here. So I have cosine theta, if I pull out a cosine theta, I'm left with cosine plus 1. And again, just as we're kind of used to, we have two factors here. So let me split these up. So on my left here, if cosine theta equals 0, well, which values of theta produce a cosine of 0? Well, I could use my calculator. Or if you're comfortable with some of these special angles, then you know that cosine theta equals 0 when theta equals 90 degrees. And if that's the case, also when theta equals 270 degrees. Your calculator will only give you one of these, by the way. And I'll kind of talk more about the, gra the graphing, the calculator piece in class. Um, so there's one set of solutions. And if I look at my second factor, I have cosine theta equals negative 1. And you might be thinking, well, I know that cosine of theta equals positive 1 when theta is 0. So cosine must be equal to negative 1 when theta is on the opposite side of 0, so or 180 degrees. And because we're dealing with just this particular solution from 0 to 360, these are my three solutions. So my solutions are 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 
and 270 degrees. These are my three solutions. For this example, right, if I have 4 sine squared theta equals 1, there's no restriction here, which means I need to use my general solution. And the process is the same. It's exactly the same. We just have one extra piece at the end. So again, my equation solving strategies are still applicable here. I'm going to start by dividing by 4. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to do I get 1 half, I get plus or minus 1 half. So I have two solutions I need to consider. Right? I have to consider what happens when, let's see, maybe we'll move it up here. When sine theta equals 1 half, and when sine theta equals negative 1 half. All right, well, sine of theta equals 1 half. When, again, one of my special angles, so I know that this is equal to, let's stick with radians, I guess, just to get some practice in. And theta is pi over 6. Well, there's somebody somewhere else in the entire unit circle, kind of over 2 pi, where theta e sine theta equals 1 half, and that would be in the second quadrant, right? Because sine is positive in the second quadrant. So which angle in the second quadrant has a reference angle of pi over 6? Well, that's going to be 5 pi over 6. And then... In my second equation here, sine theta equals negative one half. Well, again, still working off of that one half, so I know that all of the reference angles for my solutions will be pi over six, but I need it to be negative. So I can't be in the first or second quadrants because sine is positive in those quadrants. So I must be in quadrant three and four. And in quadrant three, that would be seven pi over six. And in quadrant four, that would be 11 pi over six. Now, if I asked for the particular solutions, these would be it, right? These would be my particular solutions. But I didn't ask for particular solutions because I didn't give you a domain restriction. I asked for, um, sounds like, the general solution. So what we need to do to each of these to make sure I represent pi over 6, but I can keep adding 2 pi to all of these because my values for sine repeat every 2 pi. That's that period that we talk about. So I'm just going to tack on this 2 pi n for each of my solutions. 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And for all of these, n is an integer. So this is my, this is now my general solution. And this is just to say that I can take pi over six and I can add two pi and it'll look like I'm at pi over six on my graph, but I've really gone a full revolution plus pi over six. So that's kind of what this is saying is I can keep adding two pi and I'll get the same value. Um, as if I didn't add 2 pi at all to each of these. But I want to account for the fact that I want to consider all of my possible solutions, and, and this is the way I do it if this is something I come across in a problem.